Welcome to this week's Q&A. We've got a question this week from one of our viewers in London and it's in relation to the New South Wales um, government passing the new First Home Owners Choice Scheme and that relates to people being able to choose between paying the normal stamp duty amount or paying an annual tax and our viewer said look has this now become law I'm not sure. Well, the answer to that is yes. Um, that's now been passed. And so anyone buying a, a first home in New South Wales, and if they're an Australian citizen or resident um, and aged over 18, can then apply and choose which method they would like to employ when they buy their new first home. And between now and the 15th of January 2023, if people settle, purchase and settle on a new first home, then they'll be able to apply for a refund of the stamp duty that they've paid if they wish to choose uh, the ongoing annual tax payment uh, as part of the scheme. So, look, the answer is, like with so many of these things, it's, it really depends on so many things. I mean, it depends... First of all, you've got to qualify. So in New South Wales, uh, the property has to be valued at one and a half million dollars or less. Um, and then you've got to work out, I suppose, how long you want to stay in living in that property. On average, you know, people in New South Wales spend say 10 and a half years, perhaps a little bit longer for first homeowners in their, in their home. So um, you've got to look at the comparison between paying stamp duty up front or paying this annual tax amount, which is going to be $400 plus 0.3% of the land value. And that can be very attractive actually. So um, now that things have been, I guess, um, ratified, and the other important issue is that if you then go and choose to sell that home later down the track, the new purchaser does not have to accept the ongoing annual tax component if they don't want to they can simply choose to pay stamp duty so you know that's pretty important and also let's face it if you're up close to that one and a half million dollar limit now when you go and sell that property in four five seven ten years time uh, it's very likely that um, the new purchaser won't actually have the opportunity to use the annual tax system in any event as a property will have gone above the upper threshold that's been set so you know those things worth bearing in mind but then let's have a look because you know let's say you are looking to buy your first home in sydney and it is close to one and a half million dollars um, you know the stamp duty can be up to upwards of sixty thousand dollars on on that purchase yet if you use the annual um, scheme you might only be paying closer to three thousand dollars so a fairly large difference up front can mean so much for people who've been saving up a deposit um, and trying to get into the market. So I think there are some, you know, there's some real good positive attributes to the scheme that the uh, New South Wales government has brought in here. And it really depends so much on your personal situation. And the other thing to consider, because, you know, we also have many viewers around the world, Aussie expats and many Australians in living in Australia, who <clears throat> after they purchase their first home can move on and sometimes leave that as an investment property and buy another home. So what happens then? Well, if you move out of that first home of yours and turn it into an investment property, you then have to pay a, a, a much, I suppose, larger fee and that's $1,500 per annum plus 1.1% of the land value of that property uh, to keep it as an investment property and continue paying that annual tax amount. So lots of things to digest there and think about and um, the answer may be different for many people because if somebody only wants to stay in a property for a few years, let's say, then I would suggest if you qualify, the annual tax method would probably be um, something that you'd look at in a very favorable light. So if you've had some questions about this yourselves or you, know, you just find this interesting, then please subscribe to our YouTube channel and click like and get updates from us as we post them on these important changes to legislation and other points of interest for, for people who are looking to either buy their first home or invest in property. And we'll come back to you again next week 
and I'll see you at next week's Q&A. I'm Andrew Untervega.